In digital image processing, thresholding is the simplest way of segmenting images. And image segmentation is yet another process of partitioning a digital image into multiple segments, which are basically a set of pixels, also known as image objects. A goal of segmentation is to simply change the representation of an image into something that is more meaningful or easier to analyze for the software or the computer, which is processing the image. It's typically used to locate objects and boundaries such as lines, curves, and etc. in an image. And more precisely, image segmentation is the process of assigning a label to every pixel in an image such that the pixel with the same label share the same characteristics or the same features. So without going into much details, let's look at an example of what a thresholding does. So this is an original image. Just got multiple shades, different colors. And this is what a thresholding would look like. Here. You can notice that it only has two unique shades or two unique intensities of pixel, which is either black or white, which means if you convert it to its binary value, it's either zero for black or one for white so it's a binary image or if you store it as eight bits then it's zero for black which is eight zeros in binary or 255 for white which is eight ones the image that we're going to work with today is the one shown here which ironically spells the word image. Now the purpose of thresholding this might be there might be several reasons but the obvious reason is so that the computer software or the image recognition software can easily detect these letters. The problem with directly detecting this image here is the fact that it has got extra pixels in the background and this kind of background is called unevenly eliminated background which usually occurs due to the physical shape of the lens or the edge of the lens where the light bends thus creating such an effect which is called un, uh, unevenly eliminated background and that will cause some issues some major issues if you directly try to recognize off of this image so before the algorithm starts detecting the pixels it's better to threshold it so that we only get these i m a g e and then the software or the computer algorithm will go into the next step of correlating as to what these symbols stand for in this case it should be i should be m should be a should be g and e but before it can do that, we have to clean this. We have to find an algorithm to clean this image up. The software that I'm software tool that I'm going to use in order to come up with such an algorithm is called ImageJ. And the version that I'm using is ImageJ version 1.53e which is most likely the latest version at the time of making this video. I also want to record my moves. So I'm going to utilities, uh, sorry, macros, and go ahead and record. Take it to the other screen where I have my script, which I'm reading off of. And I also want to monitor my events here so as to keep a log of the actions that I'm performing so in case if I come up with a very nice algorithm 
then I can repeat it, I'll reproduce it, or reproduce the results. So I'm gonna go open the file that I just showed you. Now let me show you what happens when you directly thr try to threshold this image without enhancing it first. Now here you can see the histogram of this image right here. Um, you could also use the histogram tool. Go to analyze histogram. You can see it has all sorts of pixels starting from zero, which is black. And then there's a gap here. Some pixels are missing in the darker region, or maybe it doesn't have any black pixel. The pixels actually start from here. Yeah, the minimum is 18, so that means it does not have true black pixels. The darkest pixel that it has is 18, and the brightest pixel it has is the true white, which is 255, as denoted here, min and max. And it has all the pixels in between with different level of um, intensities and different bin height depending on the value or the number of pixels having that particular or having that unique intensity okay for example here it says value 203 that means there are and the count 251 that means there are 251 pixels in this image that has the value 203 or that has the shade which corresponds to 203 which is here that shade right there anyway so this is the histogram of the image let's go ahead and try to threshold this image without enhancing it now when you go to thresholding there are many algorithms you can use so I'm going to use the default one and here is your histogram of what you want to keep Here. or what you want to delete so I don't have a dark background so I will not take that I see that the problem is I can the good thing is I can get the MAGE but the bad thing is I cannot get the eye and if I get the eye I sacrifice MAGE because the problem is the eye has a much darker shade compared to these MAGE like right here it's very light but right here it's very dark but I need both of them and I don't need the background so this is not gonna work but let's go ahead and apply it anyway Let's try a different algorithm. Triangle, for example. No, nothing. See, I can get the MAGE. If I apply it, that's what I get. I don't get the I. So that's not gonna work. I'm missing data. So let's close it. Let's open the image again. The first thing that you would want to do, the first thing that is causing the issue, like I said before, is that unevenly eliminated background. Now if we can somehow remove this background from the original image, then we'll be left with the letters. So your first task will be to generate the background from this image. Now there are a few ways to do that one of the most common way is to use a blurring technique such as the Gaussian blur so let's go ahead and apply that and let me explain what it does so the Gaussian blur is um, basically it's an image processing technique again and it's the result of blurring an image using the Gaussian function 
which is named after the scientist Gauss. Okay, it's basically a filtering um, technique which is convoluted with the pixels in the image in order to blur the image and smooth out the pixels. Now the, the technique here is that we're going to blur these elements here so much so that it fades away and kind of gets consumed and flattens itself with the background. That's one way to generate the background. So we're going to go to process, filter, we're going to choose Gaussian blur. And we're going to do a preview so we want to see our results. So we're going to choose the radius which is a parameter of the Gaussian filter, blurring filter. So let's start with one, doesn't do much. Two, more blur, three, more blur. You can see as I'm increasing the blur value, the image seems to blur out into the background. That is the technique that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna use 10. And the problem is if I do too much, let's say 100, now, I have cannibalized the background, right? So I can't do that either. So I have to find an optimal level. So let's do 15. We still have some of the letter here. 16. Let's do 20. 20 is a good value. 25. And I'll go with 22. So there, that's a very good estimate for the background. Now I have the background, I'm gonna keep it on the side and nicely align them. And I'm going to open the image again. Now remember in image J, every time you open the copy, uh, every time you open the same image, the good thing is it makes a copy of that image. For example, the original was image light.tif and I open it again and it's image light dash one dot tif so every time you open the same image it makes a copy of that image with a proper suffix like dash one dash two and so on so let's go to process image calculator and let's try to subtract these two images see what we get we'll have the background subtract the original image create a new window now this is what we get it's not bad now let's try to apply thresholding to this guy so you select this one and you go to image adjust threshold now we have better results. All right. I'm gonna do that. See, I still have some pixels here, but as I keep on increasing it, it eats up the eye. Let's try a different algorithm here. Walk. If I do a dark background, which I do have. Start feeding the eye. There's no pixel there. Don't have the brighter pixels. Nope. So these pixels here and here. Have the same value so when you start shrinking the window these go away which is good but these go away too which is bad because they share very close values so this is the best you can get using the gaussian blur technique 
The problem with this image is that all the pixels here might be detected as a character might be taken into consideration and you don't want that so what we can do is we can do a median blur but the cluster of pixels here are so big that median blur might median uh, noise removal might not work so let's do a median and let's see how much it does five no does not really help us much if you do two it starts eating up the letters so we can't do that this is the best we can do okay now let's use another technique to generate the background let's close this this and let's reopen the image now this process is built into image J and it's called subtract background and it uses the rolling ball algorithm which was proposed more than three decades ago to remove background intensities uh, variation in intensity variations in medical images and it was specifically made for this purpose to remove these sort of uneven illumination in the background especially in medical images so we're going to use that process so go to image uh, process and then subtract background and you have the rolling ball radius you want to preview you want to create a background and not subtract it so again use one two three the good thing about this algorithm is that it does not really cannibalize the image unlike what happened in the Gaussian blur right if you increase the radius or the threshold then it starts blurring so much that the whole picture gets washed and you lose the background in an attempt to lose the characters but that does not happen here let's say I put 500 which is pretty high 5000 you still have an intact background so I'm gonna put 500 here and then click OK so now you have a background again but using a different technique and you have the original image here let's go and subtract them the background original image subtract OK here we go now let's try to apply threshold to this one you have much better results no residual pixel except for a few here but that can be taken care of by a median filter see the the lobes on the eye are extended too much so I can sacrifice a little bit because if I do that, then these pixels go away too, but not sacrifice too much. And this will not really help because there is no pixel here in the histogram of the difference of the subtracted image, uh, of the result of the subtraction, unless you go here and you don't want to want that. So that's good. Doesn't really have an effect. I'm going to do apply and here we have now these pixels here these can be treated as noise and we can use a median to easily remove them so go to process go to filter and use the median you can use one and use two if you use a radius of two and the noise are gone and you have only two colors and the image has been successfully thresholded and if you look at the histogram of this image you should only find two unique pixel intensities black and 
white and nothing in between no other shades zero just the black here and white just 255 and you still have the same amount of pixels 44,720 because the image dimensions are the same as the original one 344 by 130 344 by 130 so using the rolling ball algorithm gave us a much better result than using the Gaussian blur because of the way that it can be used to generate the background and then use that to subtract from the actual image.